Hello, I'm Bob Campbell. I'm going to show you a little masking process today. Um, if you take a look at the picture in the middle of the screen in um, Browse, you'll be able to see it's a picture of an English village. It's taken around the time of late afternoon, so if you look at the bottom of the picture there are shafts of sunlight going across that little field with the sheep in. Um, shafts of sunlight across the road. The problem to my mind is that the picture looks a bit dull because of the very pale sky. It's a whitish sky. So what I'd like to do is to take that sky away and replace it with something better. So let's just go into um, Perfect Layers. I'm going to say edit a copy of the image. Just click OK. It's a JPEG file. What I'll do with it now is to find a sky that I think is suitable for this particular um, combination of images. Uh, the images on the left hand side in the little mini browser, I have a very deep sunset, uh, very bright, wild kind of orangey scene or sky, which I don't think will work very well. Um, the Malta sky is, well, it's a completely different place for a kickoff, uh, but what we should see there is it's a nice sky, but it's perhaps a little bit over the top. There's a sunrise, however, that looks quite nice. Um, OK, sunrise, sunset. Maybe it won't worry. Let's see if we can make it work. If I double click on the sunrise picture, say add as a layer and say OK, that picture now fills the screen. It's sitting as a layer on top of the original picture of the village. So I'm going to take that sunrise, I'm going to drag it in the layers panel underneath the picture of the village and then let go and now we see the village again select the village and now go to the tools on the left hand side of the palette and click on the topmost brush called the masking brush there are options to use the masking brush and the one that I'll click on is my favorite tool and it's called the perfect brush okay now, I'm going to increase the size of the perfect brush. You can see it now sitting in the top left hand corner of the picture. It has a dotted uh, white line around the outside. That tells you that the brush is quite soft. It's got what's known as a feather on it, so it's a soft edged brush. It's not a hard edged brush. I prefer to work with soft edged brushes. The feather's set to 25. The size of the brush is up to 700, so it's a big brush. And in the middle of the brush is a horizontal line little minus sign I tend to call it. Now that minus sign is the active part of the brush that is designed to be the area that picks up data from the picture. So I need to be careful where I put that little minus sign. If I click on my mouse button and now start to drag across the sky, I'm accessing the image behind. I'm creating a mask, a hole in the front picture and it's showing me the new sky. And that little minus sign, I'm quite carefully positioning around the edge of the tree. If I go over the tree with that minus sign, it will start to remove parts of the tree. And I don't want to do that, I want to keep the tree in position. Okay, so it's starting to cut away and I'm revealing that nice sky behind. Now the sky behind is quite blue. I'm gonna move it so that it becomes a little bit warmer for the picture to um, complement those nice shafts of sunlight. Now, I told you if I move the minus sign over the tree, I start to remove the tree. So now use the command key. And if you use the command key, it's not picking up any more colors to remove from that background, from that sky. It's preserving everything except those white tones in the sky that it's removing. Now you'll notice around the edges of the trees that I've got quite a bit of extra white material that's kind of hanging around there, okay? Now that's because there's something known as fringing around the tiny little twigs and branches of the tree. It's something that always happens in the masking process, but at on one we have a tool that will help you fix that, and it's called the Refine Brush. Click on it, select it, and just go up to the little um, tool at the top of the screen and just make sure that that color decontamination is selected. It probably usually is, unless it's the first time you're using the software. That might be blank. Just make sure that that's checked with that little tick mark, okay? 
and when that's selected just draw over the tree. I'm drawing over the tree only on the left hand side of the screen at the moment because I want to do this a couple of times to show you how it works. Once you've filled in all the gaps in that little blob of red, let go of the mouse button and a little process bar appears and it removes the white from around the edge of those branches. Okay, now go over to the right hand side and we'll make a bigger selection around that old uh, vicarage I think it is and then we'll just rub over the tree all around the edge. You need to find edges when you use this brush. If you try and use it inside the mask, if you know what I mean, and no edges are there, then it won't actually remove anything. So just let it, let it do its job. Let's let go again. Once I've filled in all the gaps in the red, it says refining the mask, and it should remove the white fringing around that tree beautifully. It's done a really nice job. Now to do this mask, which is quite a complex mask, I've used two tools. Let's just go over it again. I use the masking brush. Okay. I selected the perfect brush option, the blue brush at the top of the screen. Okay. And once I'd done that, I used the refine brush just to clear up those white fringes, those white uh, halos around the objects that I cut out. Now, what I'd like to do with this is to go to the sky layer. So select the layer underneath the picture of the village, the sky that you've put in there. Go to the button at the top left hand tool panel and just click on the move button, click on the image and now move that sky. And you can pick it up and move it wherever you want. The sky is actually quite a lot bigger than the picture in the foreground and it means that I can warm that sky up. If you look at the sky in the left hand side little panel of images you'll notice there's a sun in there. Well I don't want to show the sun because the sun will be in the wrong position but if I just move that sky a little bit around I'll be able to find a position that I think works for the picture. Okay now just hit the apply button top right hand corner of the workspace. So we've set that sky in a new position. It looks warmer. I've got less of the bluish sort of greyish clouds in the uh, sky. It just looks a lot nicer and it kind of complements those shafts of sunlight, the warm sunlight coming through across the field. Okay, now we've got that. I've said apply. I'm going to take that layer into enhance, the little magic wand tool in the toolbox on the right hand side of the screen. And I'll go to enhance and I want to just enhance the sky somewhat. I want to make it a little bit more saturated in color, uh, perhaps put a fraction more detail in there. Well I've got all my tools to do that here. So for instance I can increase the vibrancy of the colors in that background so we warm the sky up a little bit and I can increase the detail slider just to put a little bit more definition in those clouds. Okay. Or, of course, I can go to the presets on the left-hand side, pick a preset either from the great guys at On1 who have created some for you, or you can create your own presets. But I'll just use those two um, effects, vibrancy, increase the intensity of the colors in the sky, and use that detail slider just to put a little bit more definition in those clouds, and then say apply. And the last thing I'll do is to switch my layers so instead of working on the sky, I click on the top layer, which is the picture of the village, the foreground, remember, that we cut out to reveal the new sky. Click on that one and just do the same again. And this time I'm going to brighten up that foreground a little bit because it's a bit dark, not too much. I'm going to increase the detail because whenever I take pictures, my images are usually a little bit soft. So I'm going to increase that up to about 45. So it looks quite a bit sharper. I can see more detail in there. I know that the pixels have been enhanced inside of the image. That's great. Now check exposure. Increase that a little bit just to brighten it up a fraction so it's less dull. That's nice. And perhaps a couple of clicks on that little vibrancy tool top right hand corner of the quick fixes just to highlight the image a bit more and then say apply. Now we've got a lovely combination, a little composite image that we've created using simply two tools in the masking process. 
the masking brush, the perfect brush, and the uh, refine brush, and that looks really nice. So we did that, and then we took each layer in turn into enhance and enhance them. Brilliant. What I would normally do now is to say, great, let's get that image, and we'll save it. It was originally a JPEG, so I would save it as a JPEG again. Just call it Thorpe Village Pinal. It's a place called Thorpe in Derbyshire here in the UK. I'll put it in this untitled folder and I'll say JPEG and I'll save. Now what this will do is to compress these layers into one file. I don't want lots of different... I mean, I think the original image of this is about 24 megabytes. If I have two, four layers of this with some masking and various other bits and pieces, layer masks and things, it will build it up to be a big image. So using the JPEG process at 100%, I'll have a really nice rendering of the picture that I can print out.